disclosures that are required. And that's all I'll tell you at this point. Um, let's talk about the last topic, which is OPEB. By the way, I'd like you to make sure that you look at those uh, four state. Write this down for yourself, that you need to look at this statement because we don't have time. Statement of plan net position. There are examples in the book. Statement of changes in plan net position. The statement of funding progress that we just saw. And statement of employer contribution. statement of uh, funding progress, and then statement of employer contribution. The last two are very easy to actually uh, grasp. One and two, you might have to look at them a little bit more in detail. Okay. Statement of changes in plan net position. Basically what it says is, uh, just quickly, statement of changes in plan net position is like your operating statement. Money is coming from the employer and the employee and then money going out to the retirees. So it shows the additions and subtractions or deductions. Let's talk about uh, OPEP for a little bit. Other post-employment benefits. <coughs> And uh, as you can see, the liability is quite large. At least with the pension funds, we are trying to fund something. With OPEB, no money has been put aside. Nothing. GASB's requirements for financial reporting for OPEB are similar to the requirements for pension fund. Again, GASB's requirement for OPEB are similar to the requirements for pension fund because they are similar. Okay. So just remember that. Uh, and I told you the example about, um, about Texas, but this is a big, big number. So when you review your CAFR, Look for net pension obligations. Look for OPEB obligation. Look for schedule of funding progress. 